All right, how's it going? My name's Paul. I'm here from Diderio and Evans Drumheads at Sam Ash today. Uh, we're going to be going over snare drum tuning basics as well as exploring some of our most popular drumhead options to be able to achieve the sound you're looking for. Uh, so whenever we're going to work on tuning and changing out your drumheads, the first thing we obviously need to do is replace the drumheads. So I'm going to start by just loosening the snare wires and taking these off so I can get access to the bottom head. All right, got the snare wires off. So you may notice I've got some power tools here. Uh, this is actually an Evans drill bit key. This is a really great option if you're gonna be changing out a lot of drum heads, especially if you're doing your entire kit at once, both batter and resonant heads. It's gonna save you a lot of time taking the heads off. Uh, I won't use this to put the drum heads back on. I just wanna be careful that I'm not gonna over tension the drum heads and strip out the lugs. So I'll only use it when I'm taking the heads off. Okay, there's the first head. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the batter side. Just set that there to the side. Okay. Set that to the side. Okay, so once you have the drum heads off, uh, it's a really great idea to use a rag and just make sure there's no dust or debris on the bearing edge. You just wanna make sure that everything's nice and clean and you're gonna have good contact between the bearing edge and the new drum head. So do the same on the bottom side as well. All right, looks nice and clean. So we're gonna start on the batter side and we're gonna be taking a look at a couple different drum head options. Uh, the first of which we're gonna do is our UV-1. So this is one of our newest drum heads. It's a really exciting product for us. It's a single ply 10 mil drum head. So pretty similar to what you've experienced in the past with our G1. Uh, the difference is it's quite a bit more durable. So we actually found a new type of film that we use on this. It's a little bit more rigid, so it's not gonna dent or stretch as easily. It's gonna hold the tone a lot better over a longer period of time. The other unique feature about this is that we developed a new type of coating. Uh, it's actually, rather than being sprayed on like our traditional coatings, it's applied in a silk screening process and it gets cured instantly under UV light. Uh, so what that means is it's a much more consistent coating uh, and it's also, it's got a lot better adhesion to the film base. It's a lot more durable. It's not gonna chip or fray quite as easily. So your drum head's gonna be looking fresh and new for a lot longer. Um, the other nice thing about this, uh, just like all of our other drums, drum heads, it's constructed with level 360 technology. So you've probably heard that term in the past. You've probably seen it on our packaging. You may be wondering what exactly is level 360 technology? So there's a couple different things that we changed back in 2013. The first of which is actually in the hoop design. So rather than just using a standard U-channel, uh, we actually made a, made a very small uh, adjustment right on the edge here, uh, what's called a rollover hoop. So what that does is when you bend the material and you put it into the hoop and glue it, once this drum head gets put under tension, that little uh, lip on the edge of the hoop prevents the glue block from separating. So we're able to get much higher tension on our drum heads with this. The other part of Level 360 technology is actually in the collar design. So you'll notice when I put this on the, the shell, it actually sits very flat. It's nice, spins freely. There really isn't too much rocking motion. Uh, traditionally, drum heads have been made with a very rounded, uh, shallow collar angle. And the issue with that is it doesn't sit flat on the bearing edge. So when you put tension on one side, the other inherently wants to lift up. It makes it very difficult to get the drum head seated onto the bearing edge, to conform to the bearing edge, and to put equal tension on it. So with this new design, the drum head sits flat, it's level 360 degrees around the drum, and it's going to tune quite a bit easier. So whenever I put a new batter head on, I usually like to line up the logo directly across from the snare throw-off. Just a nice guide to help when I put the snare on the, uh, on the stand to make sure I'm putting it in the proper position to get the most snare response possible out of the drum. So take the hoop, put it on sit nice and flat, and I'm just gonna start by finger tightening all of the tension rods.
Okay, so the batter head is on and it's nice and finger tight. I'm gonna do the same exact thing with the resonant head now. So here we have a nice, fresh uh, snare side 300. It's just the best run of the mill, standard snare side head. If you want a little bit more snare response, you might wanna check out one of our snare side 200s. Or if you want a really deep throaty sound from your snare, maybe check out the snare side 500. All right, so I'll do the same thing and just finger tighten all of the lugs. Okay, so both heads are on and they're both finger tight. I'm gonna start using the drum key now. So it's best to start with just uh, small turns. I'll usually do between a quarter and a half turn and just go around and start bringing the drum head up to pitch. It's gonna happen pretty quickly. Uh, this is actually my favorite drum key that I have. It's an Evans magnetic key. There's actually a magnet up inside the tip there, so it's really great. It's secure on the drum. You can even turn the drum upside down and it still stays on. So it's great if you're playing gigs and you want to have a drum key uh, handy. I'll usually just leave it right on the snare. It doesn't rattle at all or anything when you play. Uh, it's also got a nice ergonomic handle, so it's really comfortable in your hand. And it has a knurled top as well, which makes it really easy to do quick spins when you're taking off a drum head. All right, so I'll start just slowly bringing this up to pitch. And it's important to always use a star pattern when you're putting tension on a drum head for the first time. It just helps ensure that the tension is put on equally across the drum head. Okay, so I've gone all the way around once. I'm just gonna double check where we are in terms of pitch. Still pretty low, so we'll keep going. start to hear it come up to pitch at this point. All right, let's see if we're a little bit closer. Okay, so the drum is actually resonating at this point. So now what I'm gonna do is pick one of the lugs that I like the sound of, and I'm gonna try and match everything else to that. This one's a little bit high. I'm gonna go for this one. So one of the tricks that I found, uh, it can be pretty difficult to know what you're hearing when you tap a drum. Uh, between hearing the fundamental pitch of the drum and then hearing the overtones, uh, you know, your mind can get foggy pretty quickly and trying to differentiate all the different things you're hearing. So I found that by applying a light amount of pressure in the center of the head, you're able to isolate the pitches you're hearing and better tune the drum head. a little bit high, these ones are a little bit low. All right, we're pretty close, so that's a good starting point. I'm now gonna switch to the batter head, and we're gonna do the same exact thing. Just start slowly bringing the drum head up to pitch. All right, we're pretty low right now, so I'm gonna bring it up a little bit more. See where we are. So these two are a little bit high. All right, now I'm just going to try and match all of them.
All right, we're pretty close. Um, I'm not going to get too much into tuning to specific pitches or different tuning ranges. That's totally up to your preferences. The great thing about this drum head is it can be used in a variety of different tuning situations. Uh, like I said earlier, it's a really great option for an open and expressive sound. It's very versatile. Uh, I use this when I play jazz because I like to have a very open resonant sound, a lot of overtones, as much snare response as possible. Uh, if you crank it up, you can get a really nice crisp uh, dry sound. Same thing with tuning it low. Uh, so there's a lot of great options. So I've got the drum relatively in tune and I'm going to put the snare wires on now. So right here, I have a set of Pure Sound Custom Pro snare wires. Uh, in my opinion, these are the best snare wires. Uh, it's my go-to snare wire I always use. Uh, there's a lot of really great design features on these. Uh, if you take a close look at, at the butt plate, you might notice the edges here are kind of bent down a little bit. Those are our anti-choke butt plates. And what that does is it reduces the amount of tension directly over the snare beds. So it helps reduce unwanted snare buzz. And one of the other nice design features are these speed release straps. So these make it really easy to take the snare wires on and off of the drum, especially if you're in a situation where your bottom snare head breaks. Uh, this allows you to easily remove the cotter pins like this and just take the snare right off uh, without having to do anything with the throw off. It allows you to keep the same tension setting that you wanted. Uh, so it's a really great option for quick snare uh, either wires or bottom head changes. And these are available in both steel and brass finishes for different sounds, as well as a variety of different uh, strand configurations. I think this one right here is probably a 20 strand. All right, so the important thing when you're putting snare wires on is to make sure that these are lined up evenly on the drum head. If it's shifted too much towards one sound, it's going to apply too much pressure directly over the bearing edge and choke out the sound of your drum. And the nice thing about the straps, if you can't see it, these have a little gauge on here which helps you line up uh, directly where it should be placed. So you want to line up the zero on that strap directly over the bearing edge. Do the same thing on this side. I usually start uh, with the snares open. Uh, and I'll get it to a good point. I'll take a lot of the tension off the throw off uh, and that way I'll basically start from scratch. So once the drum's in tune, I'll turn it over and I'll start slowly bringing the tension on the snare wires up until I get to the point where I like the sound of it. Um, it's important not to over tension your snare wires. Uh, this, it's kind of like a, a go-to thing if you're having a difficult time getting a good sound out of your snare, but if you over tighten them, you're really gonna choke the sound out of your drum. So I've got these in a pretty good place. I'm gonna tighten these up. And let's see what the snare sounds like. So with the snares off. So it's pretty in tune. Uh, there are some overtones, but that can just be adjusted by a little bit more fine tuning. Uh, so we'll do that quickly. pretty good. All right, so I'm going to put the snares on now and just see where we are. I can already tell they're very loose. So I'm going to start gradually bringing the tension up on the snare wires. Still got a ways to go. Starting to get there. A little loose.
This is, of course, easier to do when you have the drum on a stand, but. All right, so that sounds pretty decent. Uh, and from there, you can do a variety of different uh, tuning ranges to get the sound you're looking for. All right, so now we're going to take a look at one of our other most popular drum heads. This is our HD Dry. So compared to the UV-1, which we just did, a little bit different. This is actually a two-ply drum head, so it's made with two different pieces of material put together. Uh, this one's constructed with a 5 mil top layer over a 7.5 mil bottom layer, and it's got a couple unique features on it. Uh, if you can see, and you probably noticed this before, but it's actually got a bunch of little holes drilled around it. So what those are are precision drilled dry vents. And what's going on is when you strike the drum, uh, a lot of the air that's vibrating in this column, that is the drum, actually escapes the drum a lot quicker than it normally would. So it dramatically shortens the sustain of your drum. The other nice feature about this is it has a fixed overtone control ring on the bottom side. That's that little ring you see right here. So what that does is it removes any of the high-pitched overtones that the drum creates. Uh, so this is a really great option for any drummers who want a very focused, dry sound. If you've ever had a hard time uh, you know, getting a good sound out of your snare and you've you know, maybe put gaff tape on top of your drum, you've used moon gel, any of those solutions, which by the way, they're great solutions if you're in a pinch, uh, this is a great drum head for you because it's going to basically do the same exact thing, but it's not going to alter how the drum head feels. So I've done that in the past. I've even put a wallet on top of my snare. Uh, I find though that applying mass on top of the head, it kind of restricts the movement and it gives it a much more stiff feel. I don't really like that. I want a really nice rebound for my drum head. So if you're looking for a dry focus sound, then this is a great head for you. So I'm just gonna quickly change this out like we did with the UV-1. Okay, cool. So we just changed out the batter head as well as the resonant head and put a new set of snare wires on. I uh, spent some time fine-tuning fine this and it's really sounding pretty good, so check it out. Cool, so like I said, it produces a really nice dry focus sound. Uh, just like the UV-1, you can tune this in a variety of different ranges depending on your application. You can really crank this thing to the limits and get a very dry, crispy sound. Kind of like a funky drummer sound, which is great. Uh, you can tune it low as well. Okay, so those were a couple of our most popular drum head options. Again, the UV-1, which is a single ply 10 mil drum head that's very durable, as well as our HD drive for a really nice dry focus sound. So thanks for watching. I'm Paul from Evans Drumheads. So if you want to check out any of our other drum head options, please check them out at Sam Ash. Thanks for watching.